there's no other option. The forced resignation of Mubarak is good news. Good news for Egypt. Good news for America. Bad news for Zionism. Anwar Sadat, of course, began the selling out of Egypt and the betrayal of the people of Palestine. After he was gone, the powers of international Zionism had to find and support a willing prostitute who would sell out his own people, his own nation, and betray the Palestinian people for 30 pieces of Zionist silver. They found that willing creature in Mubarak, and the Zionists did not even have to pay for the bribe. They made the hardworking, productive people of America pay for it, with tens of billions of our dollars going to Mubarak. Not for the interests of America, certainly not for the interests of Egypt, but solely for the interests of Israel. As a patriotic American, I'm disgusted that Zionist-controlled American puppet politicians have sent billions of our dollars, now that's your money, my fellow Americans, to Israel every year and billions to Mubarak simply for supporting the international crimes of Israel. Billions of dollars to Mubarak and Israel while tens of millions of Americans are losing their homes to foreclosure, while tens of millions of Americans either can't afford health insurance or reduced to almost the poverty level by paying for it. And millions of students who cannot now afford a university education or they must take out huge loans that they will have to work much of their lives like slaves to repay. All while the Federal Reserve, Ben Shalom Benanke, gives over $20 trillion of your money to the corrupt Zionist dominated international banks Banks like Goldman Sachs and Mr. Blankfein. Now, would you buy a used derivative from this man? Most of you don't know that Goldman Sachs was the biggest corporate contributor to Obama. Mubarak's regime helped Israel strangle the Palestinians by supporting the Israeli blockade and forcing all trade and much entry to go through Israel, which steals 50% of the value of the shipments of even food and medicine and aid to Gaza. They do that with taxes and tribute to Israel. Israel, which had no settlements in the West Bank in 1967, not one, now has stolen huge swaths of land and connecting roads from the suffering Palestinians. And unless these thieves are sent back to Israel, the existence of a Palestinian nation is untenable, which is exactly what the Zionists planned all the while. The Barracks Alliance was key in making those crimes possible because he crippled Palestinian resistance to occupation. Notice too that while Israel committed this colossal evil, the rest of the world did nothing to stop this theft of the land and water of Palestine. Nothing to stop the murder and torture and repression of the Palestinian people and the media. The Zionist-controlled international media never demanded a stop to this enormous crime, never demanded sanctions against the world's real rogue nuclear state. Instead, they do Israel's bidding with sanctions against Iran and Hamas. Israeli Defense Minister Ehud Barak says sanctions must be imposed on Iran urgently. The comments come just days after Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu called for effective biting sanctions against Iran. Egypt is so much like European politics and American politics. It has had the facade of democracy, but in reality it betrays the will of the people. No less than 90% of the Egyptian people oppose Israel and the evils of Zionism, but still Egypt is, quote, Israel's ally. And let me tell you that most of the European and American people as well don't endorse the policies of the government. For instance, the vast majority of every nation from the UK to France to Italy, Spain, Russia, Germany, over to the United States, Canada, and New Zealand, and Australia, they are absolutely opposed to the insane wars for Israel in Iraq and Afghanistan. The vast majority of every European descended nation is also opposed to massive immigration into our countries. But still, these policies go on with catastrophic consequences for our heritage, our culture, even our existence as a people 
in our own nations. The truth is that the Zionists have promoted the loss of our European American homelands, just as they have done to the Palestinian homeland. The Zionists have always evoked a divide and conquer strategy, and that's why they bribed Mubarak. And the fact is that the Zionists are at the root of the evils of globalism just as much as they have facilitated the evils of Mubarak. For it is their media empire in Hollywood and New York and London and Paris that poisons the world. But the time is coming when the political prostitutes in Washington and London and Paris will fall just as Mubarak fell. Egypt must inspire all of us. Like the people of Egypt, the day is fast approaching when millions of our people will take to the streets, not willing to take this abuse anymore. Egypt shows the way to revolution these days, real revolution, without bombs or violence, because when the people stand up in mass, no government can stand against them. The revolutions in Eastern Europe prove that, and so does Egypt. What enabled this revolution? Let's make it clear. It was not the Zionist-controlled centralized media. In fact, the globalist media overwhelmingly supported the evil Mubarak regime. What freed Egypt from this tyrant was the technology of the transistor and the silicon chip of Dr. Shockley. It was the freedom of the internet which bypasses the controlled media bosses and enables true free speech on these questions. CNN and BBC and NBC have treated Mubarak with respect and honor during all these years that he tortured, murdered, killed, and repressed. They praised him while he personally stole tens of billions of dollars from his own people with a knowing approval of the American political puppets of Israel, just so that Israel would have this Arab ally. No thanks to the controlled globalist media, the people learned the truth and they finally realized that they were the real power, not the mass media, not the traitors in politics. They poured out in the streets in an unstoppable tsunami. Once the revolution became unstoppable, the media and the Zionist political puppets like Obama and Merkel and the Zionist owned media bosses with their stooges like Wolf Blitzer, a former lobbyist for Israel. And the fact is you are right, an uh, agent of Zionism. You right. work for AIPAC, Listen, the lobby in this country that Mr. controls Israeli Duke, policy. I'm going to read not, to you what Mahmoud Ahmadinejad has said. Uh, all right, I'm going to read to you what... Pretended that they were on the side of the revolution, on the side of the people. In fact, for years they have supported the evils of the Mubarak regime, and all for only one purpose to serve their Zionist masters. For if America and Germany and the UK really served the interests of our own people in the Arab-Israeli conflict, it would be on the side of 99% of the Mideast and not supporting the criminal 1%. Instead of trying to bomb us, the people of the Mideast would be honoring us. Instead of trying to harm us, they would be anxious to do business with us. So now the media is trying to once again take over the revolution just like they did after the assassination of the Zionist stooge and Warsadat, who the controlled media treated with solemn reverence and adulation every time they mentioned his name. Now again, they look for corrupt stooges who will do the bidding of Zionism for the shekels of corruption just as Mubarak did. Obama says that he's on the side of the people and democracy, yet months ago he was having tea with Mubarak and praising him to high heaven, to the whole world. Obama's even worse than Bush. Yes, worse than Bush. For instance, the drone attacks in Pakistan and Afghanistan have been doubled since Bush, killing over 4,500 people, often women and children in their homes, even in their beds. Imagine if it were your children. He's expanded the war in Afghanistan and into Pakistan. It's admitted that 90% of Afghanistan and Pakistan oppose Zionism. So Obama really doesn't want democracy in the will of the people in those countries, and that's why we're in Iraq and Afghanistan, to suppress the will of the people, to make them serve the interests of Israel, and our people pay the price of the Zionist control. People of Egypt, people of the world, don't be fooled by CNN and the BBC fake celebrations over the fall of Mubarak. They long supported his crimes, and they are simply now trying to seduce and corrupt the people of Egypt and the new leaders of Egypt. 
and repeat the same process again. Eternal vigilance is the price of freedom. But this time, we have the internet, we have email, and SMS, and cell phones, and video, and electronic print media that can travel the world in seconds at light speed to tens of millions of people. This time, we have our own media, and the truth can and will get out to the people. To hell with Mubarak and all the Zionist running dogs. Wherever they are, they are criminals supporting the criminal terrorist state of Israel. Up with the people of Egypt and up with the real principles of democracy across the Middle East and also with real democracy for the European and the American people. We will no longer submit to rule by the Zionist elitist globalists, the Zionist controlled Federal Reserve, World Bank and International Monetary Fund and the Zionist dominated media. Even though the media conglomerates hate it, we now have our own media today and the truth will be known to the whole world. This video is an example of the incredible power of that truth. Help it reach everyone in the world who can still think for themselves. God bless you all.